Okay, um, let's get started um, with this morning's session. Um, so our first talk is by Ava Meyer on automotive and Thank you very much for this Thank you. Thank you to the organizers for this uh, nice idea of organizing the uh, So when I was a child, uh, I read uh, popular books about mathematics. And uh, so uh, I understood that uh, this was actually a profession. I really wanted to do that. But then in these books, uh, so the main characters were men. So hmm, this is a bit uh, disappointing. And so sometimes later, uh, I heard about Emmy Newton. And it was sort of a very nice feeling to uh, know that uh, she existed. Once she uh, uh, spent her life doing mathematics. So now to mathematics. Uh, by the way, I also read in this book that uh, I mean, not uh, love to talk about mathematics, but she was very difficult to. So let, let us see whether I can do as well. Sorry. There is no microphone this morning because it is. So let's act the uh, complex uh, case surface. So big enough. Yeah. Okay. So you know uh, this means that it is uh, compact, connected, simply connected. And canonical bundle trivial. So the name uh, K3 was given by Andre Weil. In 1958. And uh, so in his text, he says that uh, this is to honor uh, the mathematicians, three case for Comer, Kela, Soderia. So it's case three in their honor and uh, the honor of the beautiful K2 mountain. So that's the name. So, and so I, I start by uh, recalling some basic things about cases surfaces. So, H2, X, and Z, which I will denote by L sub X, is a free Z module of rank 22. And so it carries the intersection form. So this form makes a lix into a even unimodular lattice. Of signature 319. Okay. So uh, in this talk, uh, lattices will play important role. So I recall some definitions and basic facts. So first of all, what is a lattice? In general, a lattice is a pair uh, LQ where L is a free C module of finite rank. Q is a Symmetric linear form where you will in the integers, and uh, we always require that the determinant is not zero. Moreover, uh, so even means that uh, that q x x is even for all x in L. And unimodular means that the determinant is plus or minus one. Q 
Okay, so. So there are some uh, well known facts uh, about the signature of this uh, sort of lattices. So if, if L, so I, usually I will uh, just denote the lattice by L and uh, Q is understood. So if L is even unimodular and signature RS, then R has to be congruent to S mod eight. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is that uh, if uh, the lattice is indefinite, so R and S are both greater than zero, then there is a unique lattice uh, up to isomorphism that is uh, even unimodular of that signature RS. Okay, so I just write this down too. Okay, so second thing that And suppose that R and S are both greater than zero. So then in definite case, then there exists a unique of two isomorphism, even unimodular lattice. of signature RS. So this will be denoted by lambda R sub uh, RS. So for instance, our the K3 that is the one that we, we consider here, so unique up to isomorphism. So it, it can be explicitly written as U to the Third power, so U is the uh, rank two hyperbolic lattice plus orthogonal sum, the minus the E8 lattice uh, squared. So there is a unique way of uh, writing in general for R as uh, provided they are congruent uh, to each other with U8, uh, this combination of U's and uh, plus or minus E8. Okay, so this is. Uh, this is our lattice, okay, see lattice signature 319. So, first remark is that if, uh, okay, so, this thing. yes, no, wonderful. This one is very heavy. So, okay, so I will denote by of X the group of automorphisms of the surface. So if A is an automorphism, then it induces uh, A star and X to LX. And it is an uh, isometry of, uh, of the lattice. And moreover, the map of X to the orthogonal group of LX, so of isometries of the lattice is actually injective. Oh. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll try to get this other one. Okay, so this one. I will just use this one. <laughs> so Okay, so we also need the Hodge decomposition. H two zero plus H one one H zero. So this one is twenty dimensional. These are 
on the machine. Okay, and then we obtain another lattice noted by S sub X, taking the intersection of Lx with the H11 that I just right here. Okay, now from now on, I will suppose that the crazy shear surface is projective. So I assume, and from now on, it will always be supposed. So under this hypothesis, the signature of Sx is, so let me denote by rho S sub x as usual, the rank of Sx. So the signature is one x minus one. Okay. And uh, so there's another lattice that we consider, which is the orthogonal complement of Sx in Lx. So this one is called the transcendental lattice. And Sx is the Pika lattice. Okay, so uh, yes, and uh, uh, of course the signature of, uh, yeah, so this, uh, uh, this the sum of dx is a finite index. And signature of dx is s plus two twenty minus dx. So we we already know that uh, if we have an automorphism and we restrict it, if it is uh, the identity when restricted to the whole of Lx, uh, then uh, it's the identity. But okay, so what happens if uh, just one or the other of these restrictions is, is the identity? So, so what zero of x be a set of automorphisms? So it's that the restriction of uh, uh, a star to, to, sorry, to Tx is the identity. Okay, so maybe I leave it here. So you have an exact sequence, one, zero, x, of x. Co kernel indented by M so X, and uh, it is a finite cyclic group. So let MX be the cardinality. And so phi of MX is less than equal to 20. So there is another uh, interesting cyclic, uh, cyclic group. So if I now restrict a star, so a sent to a star um, restricted to Essex, the kernel here we denote by n sub x is also a finite cyclic group. So actually it can be identified uh, to a subgroup of M sub X. So I denote by N sub X this order. And so N sub X divides M sub X. Okay, so it is an uh, interesting question, I think, to, uh, to understand uh, these uh, invariants or values of Lx, mx, so even because uh, why not uh, uh, also uh, fix the, the rank of the, the Picard lattice or the transcendental lattice, which is uh, equivalent, of course. And uh, 
So this is this is the question. Okay, so actually, maybe surprisingly, there's not so much known about this or the values of NX were investigated uh, a long time ago already by uh, Voronsov. Voronsov already maybe two. But that's a, it's a paper, that's an announcement. It's extremely hard to find. Kondo, 10 years later, and also uh, Ogizo Town. Okay, so the question they looked at is this values of NX, assuming that phi of nx is equal to the rank of the transcendental map. Okay. Yes. No, <laughs> that's what I wanted. I wanted this one. I got it. Okay. So um, let me tell you uh, uh, the results that they they proved. Okay. So this is theorem one. Oh, by forms of forms of condo. So it's, it's, it's three, three different papers, but I just combined the, uh, the results uh, that they showed. So it goes like this. So let M be an integer, at least three. And suppose that phi of M is less than equal to one. So there exists K3 surface, so it always means a complex projective. X, um, so that N sub X is equal to M, and and rank of uh, the transcendental lattice is equal to phi of X. So, if and only if there is a list. Okay, so I just write because there is a world of list and the condo list, and I will write down the numbers from there. I can use it here. So a is the condo list, so it is 12 plus 28, uh, 36, 42, 44, and 66. Okay. So there must be some logic if I remember it like this. So then B is actually quite simple <laughs> because it's 3, 9, and 27, 5 is 25. And then seven, eleven, uh, you can guess uh, the rest of uh, 13, 17, uh, and uh, 19. Okay. So <laughs> this is A and B. And uh, moreover, Tx, let is Tx is unimodular. If and only if M is in A. And X is unique up to isomorphism. Okay, so this is the result uh, that they proved. So I saw it first, but I said, hmm, so a little bit strange that uh, we have a list like this. Okay, so 
uh, there is a what I want to show you is that there is another way of thinking about this that uh, uh, less this side. Okay. Excuse me. I didn't understand the question. Hi. 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 Ah, hi, that is the Euler indicator. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so. So speaking about Euler indicator, so that's also the, the um, degree of uh, the uh, M signal polynomial. And so actually, there is a, an easy lemma, of course, no? Okay, so it says the following. So that there's been a homomorphism set T to be restriction of A star to the transform of lattice. Then the minimal polynomial, minimal polynomial of T is a cyclotomic polynomial. Okay. Okay, so uh, solving a question like this, uh, not only for the rank uh, of Tx equal to five n, but more generally uh, is asking about uh, the possible uh, characteristic polynomials that you can, you can get uh, for, for A star uh, restricted to, to Tx and also assuming that that it is the identity or, or on SX. So then, of course, uh, the characteristic polynomial is just x minus one to the corresponding power. Yeah. Structure of the group MX. MX is a, is a final cyclic group. Oh, cyclic, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I wrote it. Oh, you said that something. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, it is uh, actually the reason why it is. Okay, so it is, uh, yeah, and um, okay, so maybe you wonder why this is true. So uh, this level is uh, because the transcendent is a minimality property, right? So it's the minimal, the, the primitive or sub lattice of uh, minimal rank such that Tx uh, tensor uh, C contains uh, H20 plus H02, okay? So, and uh, use, using this, you see that the mineral polynomial has to be irreducible. And the fact that it's a cyclotomic polynomial that, that uses uh, the projectivity. So that is also well known, well known thing. So we use this lemma and, okay. So now I introduce some notation um, that, uh, so which is more or less like here that M, M and R, because I, so here R is one, but uh, I want uh, R to be possibly bigger. So R is one and set C. So this is the nth cyclotomic polynomial. Uh, okay, so to the, to the power R. And then we have the following. Here in two. So there exists a P3 surface X and A in X such that the restriction of A star to SX is the identity. And uh, okay, maybe I'm uh, sorry. I'm don't have so much room. So this is these two properties. So A star 
you stick to two SX identity. And secondly, the characteristic polynomial of A star restricted to Tx is, uh, is equal to C. So the minimal polynomial will be, uh, uh, will be this cyclic polynomial, uh, the characteristic polynomial has a power. Okay, so if and only if, so two properties. So first property is that C of minus one must be a square. Okay, second property, is that if C of one is one, then phi of m, so degree of the Hipton polynomial has to be congruent to four modulo eight. Okay, so uh, actually to so this, uh, Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. Right. And uh, okay, so and then uh, uh, as complement, one can have, yeah, and moreover, if C of one is one, then Tx is unimodular. And as complement, one can also prove uh, uh, this that um, if r is equal to one, then it, this is actually if and only if. C of one is one, uh, yeah. And also if r is equal to one, that uh, surface is unique up to isomorphism. Okay. So um, why do I like this better? So it, it doesn't contain a list. And also it's quite easy to, uh, to derive the list from this. Okay, so how do you do that? Uh, boom, boom. Um, This not so good. So, in the meantime, I guess you figured out how to derive the result from, from this, uh, this theorem. But one needs to know uh, the values of cyclotomic polynomials at one and minus one. Okay, so let me see. So, which are. So, let us uh, now. I just explained uh, theorem two implies uh, theorem one. So we want to apply this criteria and just believe that it's true and apply it. Then uh, what, for what values of M do this uh, one and two hold? Okay, so let's try. So if M is uh, twice P to some power, so P two or, 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 or not two, it doesn't matter. Then phi M of, uh, so here I'm only thinking of uh, the case where C is actually equal to this polynomial, R equal to one. So a minus one is equal to, to P. Yeah, so, okay, this is just uh, very simple to, to check. 
And uh, okay, so this is not a square. Therefore, one does not hold. So you rule out these things. So they, they are, uh, you, you notice that, uh, uh, of course, the, the lists don't, don't contain any power of two, nor do they contain twice uh, prime power. Yeah. This is why, because one is not satisfied. Okay, now let's continue. So suppose that M is a power of P, but P is not equal to two. Then, then pi M of minus one is equal to one. Great, okay. So one holds, but two holds also because uh, so two, there is only a condition when C of one is one, but here we have that one is equal to P. Okay, so don't ask anything. Therefore two holds also. And uh, therefore you have, so this gives you uh of list, right? Now, in all other cases, we have pi m of one equal to pi m minus one equals one. And then there is a condition, right? So because uh, uh, they have to, to, uh, uh, to look at the uh, uh, degree, right? So, okay. There is a condition. So if, if it's not congruent to uh, four module, so actually the only possibilities are congruent to four mod eight or uh, zero mod eight. So uh, zero mod eight uh, doesn't appear in, uh, in the list of uh, condo because it's not possible because of this. Okay. So now let's uh, continue a little bit to uh, to look at, uh, so now I, I think I can erase this. Excuse me? Yes, uh, the uniqueness, yes. Yeah, so I, I didn't write it because uh, because I did that rule, but this is only for R equal to one. So it is absolutely not unique otherwise. Yeah, so it's you, good that you asked this because uh, I was going to forget. Yeah, so, uh, we have now seen how to derive the, this old result from uh, theorem two, but uh, using theorem two, you can, uh, you can actually uh, uh, characterize completely the values of, of uh, X, are X and also uh, see how many parameters they depend on. So they are not unique. Uh, if R is not one. Okay, so I'm not going to write the list, but just look that it is, it is easy. Uh, it depends on the congruence of uh, the congruence properties of R. So if R is odd, so then uh, it's more or less the same thing as uh, what we had uh, for uh, R equal to one. Then, so what I'm writing here is, uh, so I'm not going to write this, but I, I'm telling you how to find it. So one and two hold, hold for C by M R, if and only. So if if R is uh, uh, congruent to one or two, so then one has to ask by uh, M of minus one equal to one. And if, If I, yeah, sorry, if phi m of one is one, then phi of m is congruent to four mod h. So that's nothing new. And if r is congruent to uh, two mod four, then uh, we don't have to worry about condition one because uh, it, will be, uh, it will be a square because uh, uh, the, the exponent is even right 
So, but we, we just have to ask if phi f of one is one, then this time phi m is just congruent to two mod four. And now if r is, is uh, congruent to zero mod four, then we must have that phi m of uh, one must be greater than one, okay? Because in that case, uh, the degree of C cannot be congruent to, it, it will always be congruent to zero mod eight because uh, it's a degree of phi m is even and you raise it to a power that is uh, divided by four. So, so there is no way that uh, two can hold other than if you uh, already specify that uh, phi of one is greater than one. And of course, again, you don't have to worry about condition. Okay, so using this, you can describe uh, all the values or the possible values of uh, this invariant. And now what about uh, M? So it's also interesting to know what we can say about that. And uh, so it's, Okay, so I'm going to use the same notation to uh, uh, an R and C. So this is theorem three. So actually, so I forgot to say, but uh, theorem two and theorem three are recent results. So actually it's uh, archived since one month. Okay, so we have again our C. Um, and then the statement is there exists a case of surface and a one prism such that the characteristic polynomial. Uh, I didn't write uh, ah ah. I, you have to, to add, so I don't want to <laughs> play with it. But the degree of C has to be uh, uh, less than equal to 20, right? So, okay, so I write it here. Okay, we have, of course, this condition. But other than that, you can take anything. Then, uh, uh, such that the characteristic polynomial. of a star restricted to tf is equal to c. So there's no restriction, you can take what you want. Okay, and the corollary Okay, so let m uh, be an integer uh, one by of m less than equal to 20. There exists Case surface x with m x equal to m, uh, yeah, if and only if m equal to one or m is even. Okay. So it's not an immediate corollary because you have to show that uh, m has to be even, except when it is equal to one. But uh, basically, it, it follows from uh, from this theorem. Uh, good. So what time is? Yeah. So now I would like to uh, explain you something uh, about the proof of these results. So first, I just outline the method of proof. So for instance, to, to just to pick the idea, think of uh, theorem uh, two first, okay? So if we have a case surface with uh, uh, an x equal to m and uh, r x equal to, to r, so fix, so let's uh, uh, fix uh, m and r as before, then um, 
there will uh, then the K3 surface X. So supposing this X has an automorphism. A such that the characteristic polynomial of A star is C of X times X minus one to uh, 22 minus degree of change. Good. So it makes sense to, to ask for, yeah. Okay, so that means that That the light is, yeah, that's what I want to say. The light is 319, so that's weaker, of course. Okay, as an isometry with this characteristic polynomial. Okay, so we must have a, a, an isometry of characteristic polynomial C of X, X minus one, two, or 22. Uh, minus C, otherwise we have no chance of, of getting this invariant. So actually this sort of suggests a more general question. And this is a question that was asked already by Gross and Nekmaron. So question. In a paper in 2002. So they asked what are the possibilities for the characteristic polynomials of uh, isometries of lattice uh, lambda RS. Okay, so of course, eight. Then they asked what are the possibilities. Here. No, no, this is M. So N, uh, yes. N uh, was, was dealt with, uh, yeah. So for N, I didn't write down the list because the list is complicated. I just explained you how to get. But for M, no computation because uh, it's just a very simple design. Yeah, so this is definitely yeah, it's a good question. One really has to distinguish <laughs> M and N. For the characteristic polynomials of uh, isometries, okay. So they uh, raised this question in, in their 2002 paper, and so actually, uh, so this is a purely number theory question, but they were also motivated by a question on uh, KC surfaces um, that I, I don't have time to go into, but it's a, a question about the dynamical degrees of automorphisms of uh, KC surfaces. So in this paper, today mainly consider the case of irreducible polynomials. Okay, so of course for us, this is not useful because <laughs> the polynomial is quite irreducible, but uh, it's also a yeah, very uh, interesting question uh, for irreducible polynomials and they obtained some results and uh, made a, a conjecture also of what the answer should be in this case. And then uh, with René Talman, in uh, 2020. So we, um, we proved that their conjecture uh, is correct. So, so we handled completely the uh, case of irreducible polynomials. 
And that has, by the way, immediate application uh, to dynamical degrees, but for non-projective uh, cases such as this. Oh. You, can, you can tell exactly which uh, degree 22 salem numbers occur. So there's a simple criteria. Good. So, but then uh, I was quite uh, intrigued by the reducible case. <laughs> and so I got two papers. So the general case. Ah, this I wrote the same number. Okay. So actually, the 22 paper is a preprint that is on archive. So, and it is, uh, it was written later than the 23 paper <laughs> that appeared online. So, okay. So in, uh, yeah, so in, in this one, I, I consider, uh, so reducible polynomials, but uh, without any linear factors. And, uh, but then, okay, when I was done, I realized, hmm, so the KC surfaces one really needs uh, linear factors. Okay, so then the second paper uh, deals with, with that case also. And uh, so in, in this paper, there is nothing about KC surfaces, but this one, yes. Okay, and, and uh, yeah, so what I wanted to say is this, this first question that we have here. So now uh, with applying this result, uh, I can tell you exactly, uh, so you give me a polynomial uh, and uh, I can tell you whether or not uh, lambda 319 has an isometry with this uh, characteristic polynomial. But that's not quite enough, actually. So and interestingly, this not quite enough <laughs> aspect also comes uh, up in, uh, in the criteria. So one has to pick something else than the, than the uh, characteristic polynomial. So because, okay, so and I continue this. Okay, so suppose we have this automorphism uh, of a KC surface. We have this characteristic polynomial. Let for this automorphism set T equal to A star fx. Notice that T of x is equal to care C of T. Okay, so within this case field is like that. And of course, its signature must be equal to two degrees, uh, yeah. Uh, yes, two degree C, I understand. It must have this signature, right? Okay, it's not enough that the characteristic only of this. So, we have to um, refine the criterion so that so that it 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 gives us any prescribed signature. I will not make it precise because uh, it's a bit complicated to write down uh, details, so, but it can be made quite precise. So you define a, a notion of a signature of an isometry that precises that it must be. Uh, something prescribed on each of these, these factors. Okay. So all these questions are now solved. So these are arithmetic questions. And then there is still, uh, okay, so suppose uh, we have C in uh, the total group of uh, number C19 with, with required properties. Okay, so given characteristic polynomial and given signature as you want, where is the KC surface? So this actually, so this is something that already appears in the papers of uh, Gross McMullen and other papers of uh, McMullen. So there's a criterion of Charles McMullen to decide whether or not this, uh, Decide whether we, we really get a KC surface X and A of X with uh, 
with uh, a star. A star actually equal to T, you know, I, I, for the whole thing. Okay, so you have certain isometry of the case three lattice. It is, it is not obvious, but it comes from uh, geometry. So this I will not uh, uh, give you details on because it would take too much time. But it, it uses uh, deep theorems on KC surfaces such as Torelli's theorem and Torelli P, P of the period pairing and, and uh, yeah. So the criterion of McMullen is not always easy to, to check, but it turns out that here I'm dealing with uh, isometries that have the nice property that when restricted to the uh, Picard lattice, they are the identity. And so that suppresses most of the difficulty of the application. Of. So the, the criterion very beautifully applies. So this is the, the plan. Hmm. Okay, so I have still five minutes. I can give you a little bit of details about uh, these results. So the idea is the following. First of all, so there is a, a necessary condition for a polynomial. I see that I will not be able to say very much, but okay, I'll try. Okay, so, so let F be our candidate uh, polynomial, so it has to be monic x equal to x. Uh, and so degree of f is 2n. Uh, no, this is 2n. Uh, so there's no difficulty here. Okay. And uh, yeah, so, and we have rs uh, such that h. And so the property star will be Lambda RS uh, has uh, isometry with characteristic polynomial. Okay, so, so far we don't worry about signature, just characteristic polynomial condition. So this star implies um, that the absolute value of f of one, f of minus one, and also minus one to the n, f of one s, f of minus one must be squares. Okay, so this is a necessary condition essentially it was found by Gross uh, uh, and McMullen. Okay, so maybe you see here uh, where the values of one and minus one uh, play a role already. So we have to have this condition. Then, so it turns out, so that is essentially the work that we have done with uh, Randy Talman. It's not really said right this in this paper, but uh, uh, this is actually a local condition. So it is a necessary condition, but it is sufficient for the, for star to hold over CP for OP, okay? Including a condition being even. Understood. And then, uh, so then there is a, a Hasse principle. So if the polynomial is irreducible, it turns out that the Hasse principle holds in general. So if not, then, so this is in this two, two more recent paper. So to F, associate a group, CF. So it is a abelian group, a fi uh, yeah, finite yeah, group of type. Two to two. So it is trivial for irreducible polynomials. And uh, so otherwise, the combinatorics of on the uh, irreducible factors. F, so they play an important role. And okay, so um, yeah, so I really don't have the time to explain, but uh, if you like, uh, I'm happy to explain to you afterwards. And an abelian group, and and then the theorem is that if you have so this uh, uh, necessary condition with the f of one and so on not being scarce, so 
Yes. To support that. And plus, if you know that that is zero, then the answer to question size, yes, including signature. More or less explain. And uh, what is quite interesting, I think that if G is not zero, then one has a map C would do Z. And this depends on signature condition that I didn't really explain. So that star holds if and only if epsilon is zero. Okay, so thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions? So, you know, in, in various cases, you, you, there's a unique K3 surface with these. Yes, board. yes. Have, have those been constructed explicitly? Yes, yes. Uh, I that, see. that is, yeah. So that's in Condos paper. So, yeah, so I, I put that you have because I forgot to tell you about the history. So, the, the, the paper of Borough Club, it was an announcement by uh, Hartman. Then, Condo 10 years later, so he completed the results and uh, he proved those most of our results. And uh, so he gave equations for this. They're very beautiful, actually. And then uh, with those on those, they completed the balance of case. So it's a little bit mysterious uh, that balance of never published uh, the proofs and he didn't publish any other paper. So I don't know who he is. <laughs> but, so anyway, to answer your question, yes, there are. Uh, thanks for the talk. Um, at the very beginning, you mentioned that the K3 surface you consider is projective. Yeah, and then I, 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 uh, this is a hypothesis. So, it, yeah. so it, is that also implicit in all the theorems? Uh, okay, so it's not right. I said that I always suppose projective. So in, when I started, I gave some generalities of K3 surfaces, so they hold uh, whenever uh, the surface is projective or not. But then, so when I define SX, so already the signature of SX is uh, the one I, I told you that uses projective, and after that, everything else uses projective. So actually, the analog of this question for non projective cases is not uh, because uh, the transcendental relative, so either uh, the action is just the identity or uh, the minimum minima, it can be a surrendering number. That, of course, is interesting, but it doesn't really enter in, in this discussion. So that, that's, that's an interesting question. And in the paper of Google's on the Yeah, so the question Right. If there aren't any more questions right now, um, we have a break till noon. Thank you. Thank you.